God invites us. God shows us. God invites us. God wants us. Let us pray. Eternal and precious God, we thank you for the free gift of salvation and for the generous love and grace you pour upon us daily. Because of your abundant blessing toward us, may we be generous in all that we return to you. May blessings overflow in every area of our lives so that you may be exalted. This we ask in Jesus' name.
brought this book that I wanted to share with you today. This is um, something that my parents gave me uh, a few years back that is really, really special. They gave it to me for Christmas, and, and I love this book. I'll see. Do you have any idea who that might be? What, what do you think? That's exactly right. These are these are like my baby pictures. <laughs> See, these are my baby pictures right here. But that's not exactly why it's special to me. The reason it's special to me is because of these pictures right here. These, this page of pictures on this side are my grandparents. And right here are some pictures of my aunt, my Aunt Anne my mom's sister and it's got all kinds these are old pictures aren't they you can tell they're old because most of them aren't in color yeah these are pictures of my family people that uh, i knew some of them some of them i didn't even know but they're part of my family and who came before me today we are talking about all saints sunday and all saints, what is a saint? Do you know what a saint is? No? Saint. Saint is somebody who uh, has really tried to do their best here on earth, who's worked hard, who has tried to serve God. And they've died and are now with God in heaven. And we remember them make the church that we are able to be at today. We have lots of people that were part of this church when it was created way long time ago. Lots of people. They helped to, had a vision for what happens here at Main Street and what this might look like. And because they believed in God, we were able to have this place to come together and worship and for us to learn about God. My grandparents, my great-grandparents, my aunts and uncles, great aunts and uncles, those are people in my life who helped my family to grow in the faith. Those are some saints that are in my life. And I know that there are some saints in your lives too. People that have helped you grow and learn. So, let's pray. God, we do thank you for all the saints in our lives, those people who love you and have helped us learn to love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
today comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. It's unnecessary for me to write to you about this service for God's people. I know about your willingness to help. I brag about you to the Macedonians, saying Greece has been ready since last year, and your enthusiasm has motivated most of them. But I'm sending the brothers so that our bragging about you in this case won't be empty words. And so that you can be prepared, just as I keep telling them you will be. If some Macedonian should come with me and find out that you aren't ready, we, not to mention you, would be embarrassed as far as this project goes. This is why I thought it was necessary to encourage the brothers to go to you ahead of time and arrange in advance the generous gift you have already promised. I want, to be, I want it to be a real gift from you. I don't want to, you to feel like you're being forced to give up anything. What I mean is this, the one who sows a small number of seeds will also reap a small crop, and the one who sows a generous amount of seeds will also reap a generous crop. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We just read the scripture, and we know how important the Bible is for all of us, for us to learn the stories of the faith, for us to go to it in times of trial, to find comfort, in times of joy that we can celebrate with God's people. And we thought it would be appropriate for us to uh, focus on Scripture and passing it down to the next generation on All Saints Sunday. On the day we are remembering the saints who have gone before us, who treasured the Scripture and offer that Scripture to the next generation. So we have, I think, two third graders that are here, if you'd like to come forward now. All right, this is for you, this one's for you, and this one's for you. It has a Bible, and it's got a study guide, and we want you to use it, dive into it, look at some of the pictures in it, and, and see if what you can learn about God and about Jesus and what God is calling you to do in your lives, okay? Let's do a prayer real quick for this. God, we do thank you for the Bible, for us to use it to learn more about you. Guide these two young women as they take this oh-so-sacred gift that it may help enhance their lives, encourage them, guide them into the life you are calling them to have. In Jesus' name we pray. I do think, can't tell, that it's really important for us to celebrate All Saints Sunday. It's a day for us to remember the people in our lives who have gone before us and helped us on our faith journey. To remember the people who did their part in passing along the faith to the next generation. To remember the people who did God's kingdom building while they were here. Today we specifically have remembered seven of Main Street's members who have left this earthly church in the past year. And I've shared with you in the past some stories of the saints in my life who guided and walked with me in my faith journey. So today I want to lift up 
Miss Susan Carmichael. She was one of my professors of Christian education in my undergraduate work at Pfeiffer University. Now she earned her BA in Christian education in 1948 and her master's in 1959. By the time I arrived at Pfeiffer, she had actually retired from teaching full time and only taught three classes, Human Development One, Human Development Two, and Christian Education Practice. And I had Ms. Carmichael for all three of those classes in my freshman year. Shortly after I graduated, she stopped teaching altogether. So I was one of the last people to be blessed to learn from her. For over 35 years, she prepared future Christian educators to go to local, mostly United Methodist churches, and to use the knowledge and the skills and the resources that she had empowered them to have to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And I have to share one activity we did in that Christian education practice class. She gave us blank film strip rolls. And we took pens and drew our own images on those rolls to tell a Bible story. So now this was back in the spring of 1990. Homemade movies using VHS cassette tapes were just getting started. So this method of teaching the faith at that point in time was still very relevant. But see, it wouldn't have been when Ms. Carmichael graduated in 1948. She taught us that in, into, in addition to understanding human development and how we mature in the faith, we also need to use teaching methods that connect with the students, that are relevant to the students, and that can connect the stories of the faith with our own stories. And Ms. Carmichael joined the church triumphant in 2020. But I imagine if she were teaching today, she would encourage the next generation of Christian educators to use smartphones and maybe AI to teach and share the faith. Her teaching and guidance helped release God's blessings in my life so that I was empowered and ready to release God's blessings in the lives that I'm in ministry with. As we continue our Releasing God's Blessings worship service, our focus today is a legacy of blessings. To celebrate and recognize the legacy of blessings of the saints of the church that they have left for us, and to reflect on the legacy of blessings that we want to leave how we can be intentional in developing that legacy. In our scripture passage for today, Paul is commending the church in Corinth for their previous support and generosity in sharing the good news beyond their local area. Paul says, I brag about you to the Macedonians. Paul is aware of the wonderful work they had done in, in sharing the blessings that they had received as Christians. He knew that they were already creating a, a legacy of, of charity, of caring, and kindness. But Paul didn't stop there. Paul wants them to be ready to give again, to continue their support of the early church. Paul doesn't want to catch them unprepared. Paul doesn't want them to, to give because they feel forced to give. He wants it to be a real gift from the church in Corinth, not something they feel obligated to do. Paul is reminding them that they have received God's amazing, amazing grace so that they can pass that grace along to others. Friends, make... May we too be reminded by Paul's words that we have also received God's amazing grace 
so that we can pass that grace along to others. Throughout Scripture, we can see how, how faith in God, the wonder of living in relationship with God, has been passed down from generation to generation. We are part of the legacy of faith and blessing that was passed from Abraham to Isaac, from Moses to Joshua, from King David to King Solomon, from Elijah to Elisha, from the disciples to the early church. People who shared the faith, not because they were forced to, not because it was a burden that they had to bear, but because the blessings God had given them compelled them to share that blessing with others. May we be as willing to share our blessings. May we realize all the ways that God has blessed our lives, is still blessing our lives, and experience the confidence of God blessing us into the future so that we too will pass along our blessings to others. That we do our part of extending it, this legacy of blessings. Not because we have to, not because it's an obligation, but because we are aware of the overwhelming blessings we have had throughout our lives, that we too are compelled to share the blessing with others, sharing our blessings out of love and compassion and joy. Brian Bell tells us in Ghana, during the time for the offering, the people dance as part of the African culture in worship. And while music is being played, the people dance down the aisle, bringing their offering to the offering plate. And this offering could go on for a long time because they are, they're just dancing and having so much fun. They're smiling from ear to ear. They are celebrating how they have been blessed and are rejoicing at the opportunity to bless others through the ministry of their church. May we, may we be that joyful in our giving and giving our offerings to God's good work. See, we joyfully participate in the legacy of blessings when we include the children of Main Street in our intergenerational worship. When we support the work of Stepping Stones weekday program and all the work it does day in and day out. When we feed people who are hungry through the blessing box, the shepherd's table, the Parkview Community Mission, the food for kids, or Bedford Christian Ministries. We are participating in the legacy of blessings when we offer our finances and we combine them with others' finances so that this community of faith has the resources that it needs to be the light of Christ in this community. We are participating in this legacy of blessing when we arrange for our blessings, our offerings, to continue to bless others through the work of Main Street, even after we've joined the church triumphant. Now, this could be a legacy gift or endowment or a state gift. Because we have had people who have joyfully left a legacy of blessing to be cared for and nurtured here at Main Street, this congregation is able to offer college scholarships to some of our young adults. We're able to engage in ministries outside the walls of this building. We have some resources that can help take care of needed repair work for this wonderful building we have. And we have opportunities for you to add your legacy to the legacy others have created before you. If you want to know more about leaving a le financial legacy here at Main Street, I would love to talk to you. 
or put you in touch with the people who are helping the leadership of Main Street manage our legacies that we're already caring for. One of the things that Main Street is doing right now that I think is a great way to continue our, our legacy of blessings is having a building use task force. This is an intergenerational group that is going through each room in our building and talking about how that room has been used in the past, how it is currently being used, and pondering the ways that it might be used in the future. Before we move to the next room, we spend time in prayer, thanking God for all that God has done in the people's lives who have used this room, and asking God to guide us in how to use it as we move forward. And now this task force is about halfway through the building, going from room to room. We're not rushing the project, the process. We are intentionally seeking God's will in this process so that the legacy of blessings that Main Street has in our past will only grow and grow and reach more and more people into the future. So this All Saints Sunday, I encourage you to contemplate those saints who left a legacy of blessing for you and thank God for their faithfulness. And then take some time to ponder the next steps for you and the legacy of blessings that you are creating for others. Asking God for, for guidance in what might be your next faithful steps. And together we, we will build on the work of the Church of Corinth, the Church in Macedonia, the Church of John Wesley, the Church of Francis Asbury, the church that was begun here in Bedford so many years ago. The church where our parents learned the faith and the church where we became followers ourselves and will pass along our legacy of blessings to those people to others who will take up our mantle and carry it into the future amen <laughs>
into God's world, knowing that each one of us has been truly, truly blessed so that we can bless others. Let us go about God's blessing work. Go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.